state the rate limiting reaction of beta oxidation. When it enters into the mitochondria, it will then be broken down. So you should be able to explain one, the activation, two, the transportation, and three, the reaction of beta oxidation, and also show how energy is generated. So at this point, we are at the point where we want the fatty acids to be activated first. How is this going to happen? Activation of the fatty acid is going to be done with the help of an enzyme called fatty acid A uh, synthetase. So this enzyme is usually bound on the mitochondrial membrane. In fact, on the outer mitochondrial membrane. So you have the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane there. Here, you have the enzyme fatty acyl for A synthetase. Then here, you have the enzyme called carnitine carnitine palmitol transferase 1. Other books are actually going to call it carnitine acyl transferase 1. Okay? Now, what happens is this. The first thing is that you have this fatty acid outside there. It is going to be converted into a fatty acyl for A. So what will happen is that a CoA coenzyme A will be added there. Once the coenzyme A has been added by the enzyme fatty acyl CoA synthetase, it will produce a fatty acyl CoA. This reaction, which involves addition of the CoA, is an endergonic reaction. As a result, there will be a need of ATP. In fact, it needs two molecules of ATP to be hydrolyzed. So there will be ATP being broken down into AMP and a pyrophosphate. So it requires two ATPs. In fact, the way it works is that there will be first addition of an AMP to the fatty acid acid to form a fatty acyl AMP, then as the AMP is coming off, that's when the OA attaches. But in short, it's just ATP being converted into AMP and the pyrophosphate, then the CoA is able to attach there such that you have a fatty acyl OA. So once this reaction has occurred, this fatty acid becomes a fatty acyl OA. That is to say, the fatty acid will become something like this. Okay. So it will look something like this. Afterwards, this is a fatty acyl. Okay? Once this fatty acyl OA has been produced, it will then manage to move here as a fatty acyl OA, and the next reaction that is going to follow is that this fatty acyl OA will need to move into the inner mitochondrial membrane. You know that the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane have different properties when it comes to how selective they are when it comes to the mobility, right? So you know that the inner mitochondrial membrane is highly, highly selective. The result is this. This inner mitochondrial membrane would not allow the entry of a fatty acid for A. So for this to enter into the matrix, it has to be bound to a molecule of carnitine. And you discover that this carnitine would be actually found in the matrix as well as in the intermembrane space. 
So the reaction is actually going to be whereby fatty acid of A is actually going to be converted into the fatty acid of carnitine by this fatty acid of A reacting with the carnitine and the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is fatty acid carnitine. So the core A is going to be removed as a core A. The carnitine is actually going to attach there while the core A goes off and forms the fatty acid carnitine. Sir, yeah. can we safely say that uh, the presence of the core A and the, the, the fatty acid is the one which is preventing um, the fatty acid from entering the, the inner end of the body? Not completely. Actually, if it's a long chain fatty acid with more than 12 carbons, it would still need the binding of carnitine. It won't just cross on itself. The short chain uh, fatty acids, which have le less than 12 carbons, they're able to diffuse freely. While if it's above 12, it will need to bind to carnitine in order for it to be So, this carnitine would then bind to a fatty acid of OA to form a fatty acid of carnitine and it's the fatty acid of carnitine which will then cross the membrane. How does it cross? It crosses with the help of another enzyme here and this enzyme is referred to as fatty acid it's actually referred to as carnitine fatty acid it's actually referred to as a carnitine Esau carnitine translocate. Mm -hmm. Carnitine, Esau carnitine <laughs> translocate. Yes, it's actually called a carnitine, Esau carnitine translocate. There's a reason why. Because this enzyme is actually going to work in such a way that it will transport an Esau carnitine or a fatty Esau carnitine into the mitochondria. And at the same time, it will remove a carnitine from inside the mitochondria. So, this carnitine may be inside the mitochondria, but what will happen is that as this fatty, as this carnitine, SL carnitine translocates, is allowing the entry of the fatty SL carnitine into the matrix. It is also removing a carnitine simultaneously. So it allows a fatty acid of carnitine in and removes the carnitine out. So once this fatty acid of carnitine comes in, in the mitochondria, as the fatty acid carnitine, in the process, this enzyme will remove a carnitine which was inside. So the carnitine goes out, the fatty SR carnitine comes in. That's why it's called carnitine, SR carnitine translocate. Is that clear? It's removing the carnitine while bringing in the fatty SR carnitine. Is that clear? So the name was correct as it was mentioned. So now, once the fatty SR carnitine is inside, yeah? What's the purpose of removing the carnitine which was inside the mind? The inner membrane. So you will discover that this carnitine has to be inserted into the intermembrane space for it to be able to attach to fatty acid of co-A's. And then what you see as the next reaction is that this carnitine will go off and the co-A will be added back. Okay? So the next reaction is that this reaction would involve a release of the carnitine addition of the CoA and this carnitine has gone off, the CoA is added up so that it becomes a fatty acid of CoA. So particularly what has happened here is this. You had a fatty acid of CoA, a fatty acid of CoA in the cytosol which was supposed to enter into the mitochondria for the dog station. Mm -hmm. But it cannot cross because one, it's a long chain fatty acid 
and two, it also has a copy, which makes it the activated fatty acid. So to allow it to enter, it requires the help of carnitin. How does this happen? First, the fatty acid is activated to form a fatty acid for A. Then the fatty acid for A would then move into this space here as a fatty acid for A. The next reaction is this fatty acid for A getting a carnitine so that it forms the fatty acid carnitine and the CoA goes off. The next reaction is this CoA, fatty acid for A enters in exchange with a carnitine. See? So that the carnitine comes here and the fatty acid carnitine enters. Then the, the next thing is the CoA is going to be added onto the fatty acid carnitine, removing the carnitine and the fatty acid, which has a CoA is now in the matrix where beta oxidation is going to occur. This is how fatty acids are going to be transformed from the cytosol into the matrix. So, again, what you need to remember is that fatty acids has to enter into the mitochondria. To reach to enter into the mitochondria, it helps, it requires the help of carnitine. And the carnitine is actually going to be added with the help of carnitine transferase 1, with the help of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last time the addition of uh, Yeah. Uh, you said CoA couldn't enter the mitochondria. Is that the combined with carnitine? Yeah. Is it that uh, the CoA enters the mitochondria through the, the, the glycolytic pathway or what? Since it didn't enter the inner mitochondria. Oh, here, yeah, this part. The matrix. If you remember what I told you in the electron transport channel and I was explaining the properties of the mitochondria. Go to those notes, you see that I have emphasized that the matrix of the mitochondria is rich in so many things. It has ADP, it has CoA, it has hydrogens, it has potassium and all those things that are actually inside there. And their egg six is actually going to be facilitated by particular proteins. So these are some of the transporter proteins that are there. One of them is Carnitine, this is our carnitine transfer case. Is that okay? So there is CoA in the matrix on the mitochondria already. And it's the one that will be added back to fatty acid carnitine. In fact, the enzyme which will do this is also called carnitine palmitol transferase 2. It's the one that replaces the CoA which was initially removed by carnitine, uh, which was initially removed here, it's actually going to add it back so that you produce the fatty acid carnitine inside the mitochondrial matrix and this is the one that will undergo beta oxidation. Is that okay? Is that okay or do I need to explain this again? Guys, in a nutshell, what is happening is that this fatty acid CoA, which is going to be produced, so okay, let's just call this a fatty acid so that it becomes easier for you to follow. This is a fatty acid. With the help of fatty acid CoA synthetase, this fatty acid is going to be converted into the fatty acid CoA. The fatty acid CoA has a CoA there. This fatty acid CoA, as this reaction happens, would then find itself in this region. So I might as well just say this fatty acid will be converted into a fatty acid CoA by addition of a CoA. MP and the pyrophosphate comes off. You have a fatty acid for A there. This fatty acid for A is referred to as 
and activated fatty acid. This activated fatty acid has to find itself in the matrix. For this to happen, it requires the help of carnitin because it cannot cross. So what happens is that there is carnitin that will be available, which could still be the same carnitin that was coming from the matrix, right? So this carnitin, or this carnitin which we have put here, is actually going to be added to a fatty acid CoA. The CoA comes off, and then you find you have a fatty acid carnitin. The fatty acid carnitin is the one that will cross into the inner mitochondria. Right? This crossing is facilitated by an enzyme called carnitin acyl carnitin translocates. What this enzyme does, it is actually going to exchange the fatty acyl carnitin for the carnitin. So this fatty acyl carnitin comes in, the carnitin goes off in the process. The fatty acyl carnitin is going to be converted back to a fatty acyl for A by an enzyme called carnitin palmitol transferase 2, which will add a CoA and remove the carnitin. You have a fatty acyl CoA in the matrix and the carnitin is produced, which will then go out and can facilitate other reactions such as this carnitin here. This is how a fatty acyl CoA or a fatty acid would move from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. And we made it clear that when the fatty acyl CoA is in the mitochondrial matrix, it will then undergo beta oxidation. So, in your explanation of this process, you should be able to explain how the hormones are leading to the breakdown of triacylglycerols, that's one, the role of hormones, glucagon to be specific, the next thing, transportation while bound to albumin, then enters into the cytosol. Then the next thing, activation of fatty acid, which is basically addition of a CoA, which requires ATP to be converted to AMP. Then the next thing, the entry of this fatty acid into the matrix. These are your preliminary things. Now that you have the fatty acid CoA in the matrix, you are dying know it will undergo beta oxidation. So from here, we we'll have to then illustrate how then is this fatty acid going to be broken down in beta oxidation to produce energy. Is that